We are on the record at 154. Today is July 20, 2020. This is the video deposition of Gabriel Rose in the matter of Myra Martinez versus Sheriff Mike Williams et al. Would counsel please identify themselves for the record and the court reporter will swear in the witness. Kirby Johnson on behalf of the plaintiff. Steve Powell for the city of Jacksonville. Sean Grant for Andres Chastain and Vickery. Mary Margaret Giannini for Andres Chastain and Vickery. Paul Darajati on behalf of Borshade. Good afternoon, Mr. Oh, Bro oh sorry. Can sorry. Can right here, <laughs> Please tell me swear the testimony you got to give with the issues to help you got. So help me God. Good afternoon, Mr. Rose. Good afternoon. Uh, would you please state uh, your full name for the record? It's Gabriel Martin Rose. Okay. And how, what is, what is your, are you employed by Jacksonville Sheriff's Office currently? I am. And what is your current title? I'm a police officer. Okay. Okay. Officer Rose, how long have you been employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? A little over 14 years. Can you tell me what your educational history is? I've got a bachelor's degree. From where? Liberty. What year did you graduate with your bachelor's degree from Liberty? Uh, maybe 2010, 2012, I, I don't know. Okay. Do you remember what you majored in? I do. Um, criminal justice, psychology, and theology. After you received your bachelor's degree, um, did you seek employment at that point? No, sir. Okay, what did you do after you graduated with your bachelor's? Uh, went to work the next day. Okay. Where did you go to work? Jacksonville Sheriff's. I've been, so I, I, I've been employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office since 2006. Okay, okay. so you were employed, you, you remained employed with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office when you got your bachelor's degree from Liberty University? That's correct. Okay. What made you go back to get your bachelor's degree? It was a goal that I set forth for myself as a kid. Okay. When you were first hired with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, what was your position? Police officer. Okay. And what did, what were some of your duties as a police officer? Uh, I worked patrol. Um, what zone did you work in? Zone five. Where's that at? Northwest Jacksonville. How long did you work in Zone 5? Two years. What did you do after those two years? I was assigned to the police academy as an instructor. Okay. Back up a little bit. Uh, prior to becoming a police officer, did you go through uh, police training at the police academy? I did. Okay. And what year would that have been? 1998, 1999. All right, so after you worked two years in Zone 5, you went to the police academy to be an instructor? That's right. Okay, and what were you instructing at the police academy? Uh, I was teaching basic topics to recruits in service training, things of that nature. Did you teach defensive tactics? I was a defensive tactics instructor, yes. Is there any sort of certification that you needed to receive to be able to teach defensive tactics? Yes, sir, there is. And what are those? You have to go through a defensive tactics instructor course. And who puts on that course? Uh, the training academy staff, different police academies throughout the United States, or Florida for us, for FDLE. Okay. So is it a program primarily run through FDLE? That's correct. Okay. Now, is the police academy that you work for is that more, is that taught by JSO or would you say that's taught by FDLE? Uh, it's taught by JSO, but we use FDLE curriculum. Okay. Fair enough. So I take it you're familiar with why we're here today? Yes, sir. Okay. You've been disclosed as a non-retained expert uh, in this matter. Yes, sir. Um, what are you here to testify uh, as an expert about? The use of force. Okay. 
And when we say the use of force, we're referring to an incident and our multiple incidents involving Myra Martinez that occurred on April 27th, uh, 2016. Is that correct? Uh, that may be the date. I, I don't have it to memory. An incident involving Myra Martinez? Yes, sir. Okay. How many incidents uh, are you going to be providing opinions about? I guess as many as you ask me. Okay. Okay. Was Ms. Martinez involved in, how, how many use of force incidents was Myra Martinez involved in on April 27, 2016? Objection to I guess two. Okay. All right. Uh, and where did those incidents occur? Uh, one would be in the Scores parking lot and the other would be in the back door of the uh, pre-child detention facility. Have you reviewed any materials before uh, giving this deposition today? I have. And which materials are those? Um, I've reviewed uh, Borisati's deposition. I've reviewed uh, some videos. Is that it? Uh, some reports, maybe I just, it's, I reviewed it quite some time ago with the sheriff's office. So I, I don't remember exactly what documents I've reviewed. You said you reviewed the Borisati deposition. Was that Borisati's deposition given in this case or a previous case? For this case, sir. All right, and you reviewed some videos. Would that be the dash cam videos from SCORES and the surveillance video from the pretrial detention facility? That's correct. Okay. Backing up, uh, what was your position uh, at the time that these incidents occurred? I was the lead firearms instructor for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Okay. Lead firearm instructor, were you also, did you also teach defensive tactics at this time? I was a defensive tactics instructor, but uh, that wasn't my specific duty. If they needed help, I would assist, but I was assigned to the gun range and I was primarily teaching firearms. Okay. Were you asked to provide opinions regarding the incident that occurred at SCORES and the incident that occurred at Sally Port after this incident occurred? That's correct. Who asked you to, pro to provide those opinions? Uh, internal. I'm sorry? The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Internal. Okay. Do you remember the name of, of anybody particular who told you to uh, or asked you for your opinions? Uh, Detective Strong. Stephanie Strong. <coughs> That's S-T-R-A-W-N. Comes out as strong a lot, right? Okay. And prior to providing your opinions to Ms. Uh, at the request of Ms. Strawn, had you reviewed any materials uh, when you provided your opinions? No, sir. Okay. Did had you at the time that you gave your opinions, had you reviewed the video? Upon giving my opinion, I, I reviewed the videos. Okay. Uh, did you talk to uh, Officer Borisati prior to rendering these opinions? Uh, no. Okay. How about Officer Vickery? Did you talk to him? No. Okay. Did you talk to any of the officers at the Sally Port? I've never spoken to anybody in reference to this case that wasn't an internal or an attorney. Okay. Fair enough. What is your opinion? Uh, or what opinions have you formulated as it relates to the incident that occurred in the SCORES parking lot? Uh, what specific part? Well, uh, have you formulated any opinions about the uh, use of force that Officer Borisati used on Ms. Martinez in the SCORES parking lot? Of course. Okay. What are those opinions? Um, I think some of the force was in compliance with uh, our policy and procedure and our current training practices. And I think there were some things that may have been done a little better or could have been done different, maybe not better. Probably a better way to say it. <coughs> All right. Excuse me. Now I've... What... Describe to me, if you could, describe how you recall the accident occurring. The accident? Or the incident involving Ms. Martinez and Officer Borsati and Officer Vickery in the scores parking lot. Um, 
from what I recall, uh, there's a struggle and it, it's captured by somebody's dash cam. Uh, there's a struggle and you see two officers trying to um, place a, a female in handcuffs who's resisting and there's a struggle there and when they pick her up, uh, she mule kicks one or attempts to kick one and shoves, they, uh, they end up placing her against the car to put her in the back of the car. At any point during this altercation, did Officer Borisati strike Ms. Martinez? Yes. How many times? I don't know. I didn't, I don't, without watching the video, I could not tell you an accurate number. Okay. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not the strikes issued by Officer Borisati to Ms. Martinez um, complied with JSO's policy? The strikes to get her arms behind her back were in compliance with our policy. Have you formulated an opinion as to any of the actions that Officer Bor Borisati engaged in that were not in accordance with JSO policy? Um, so having read his deposition, when I uh, gave my opinion to our internal, uh, it appeared that he was shoving her head down onto the concrete. And um, if that's what occurred, we do not teach shoving somebody's head down on the concrete in a non-deadly force situation, so that would be outside of current training practices. Okay. So, to be clear, if I'm understanding you correctly, the strikes that Officer Borisati administered to Ms. Martinez were in accordance with JSO policy at the time, up until the point where he pushes her head into the concrete? Well, again, so... Objection to form. You, you've, you've conflated two actions and um, uh, I, would, I would just ask you to rephrase that one, Kirby. Okay. I will. I will show you what will be marked as plaintiff's exhibit A. It's from the summation report, Stephen. I've got it tabbed for you. It's the oh, first tab. You. If you would um, read the first uh, couple sentences there. Yeah, if you would. Starting with the highlighter or above the highlighted? Starting at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, all right. Are you ready? Yes. When asked if Rose observed any issues with the force used by Borisati during incident number one, Rose replied attempting to slam a suspect's head against the ground during a non-deadly force encounter is not an approved tactic taught in the curriculum at the academy and further, it is not in compliance with JSO policy. Should I continue? No, nope, that's good for okay. right now. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, other than Officer Borisati's attempt to slam the suspect's head into the ground, was Officer Borisati's actions consistent with JSO policy? Objection to form. Yes. Okay. Okay, give you this back here. If you could read the second highlighted portion. Okay, you got it. Twenty-seven. Okay, the second highlighted portion, sir. Yes, sir. Starting with the highlighted portion. Yes, sir. Rose said that Borsati's actions were in compliance with training guidelines on use of force and JSO policy up to the point where Borsati attempted to strike Martinez's head against the table. Okay. So does that mean that? Well, let me ask you, are your, have your opinions changed since, since this was, since you gave this opinion? No, if you're attempting to strike somebody's head on the pavement that, in this situation, that would not be in compliance with our training. Okay. When, in, in, in the course of events, to the best of your recollection, did Officer Borisati strike Miss Martinez before attempting to slam her head into the concrete? I don't recall, sir. Okay, this may just be easier to, to do it this way. I'm going to show you a video yes, sir. that will mark it as plaintiff's exhibit B. And what I'd like for you to do... Um, Can you push the screen a little to me? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Since, since we're on video here, what I'd like for you to do, uh, Officer Rose, is if you could just count with your hands 
how many strikes you see Officer Borisati administer to, to Ms. Martinez. Okay. Okay. Well, I would object to the uh, question he will give you his observation on the screen, but. Okay. Uh, that's fine. It's you can give me the observation of what's on the screen. If you could just tell me at the end of it how many times Officer Borisadi's strikes are. Okay. How many, how many times does the video depict Officer Borisadi striking Ms. Martino? So without stopping on each one, I observe somewhere between 12 to 14 strikes. Okay. Somewhere between 12 and 14 Approximately. strikes? Approximately. I mean, okay. it's, again, without stopping at each and every one. Fair enough. Is it your testimony that aside from the strikes that Officer Borisadi administered to Ms. Martinez's head, are all other strikes administered by Officer Borisati in compliance with JSO policy and procedure? Objection to form. The strikes that I observed, everything, yes. Okay. Okay. At, you, you teach defensive tactics at the academy, correct? I do. Okay. Do you teach your, your students um, on the different types of punches that can be administered? Um, so we teach a variety of strikes. Um, so there's, yes, we do. Okay. How many, how many different types of strikes did you see Officer Borisati administer in the video? I, I, it's hard to tell, sir, as far as as fast as his hands were moving and the distance that it was. If he had an open hand or a closed hand or a hammer fist or a punch, I, there's no way for me to tell from observing that video. Okay. Did you observe any type of punch thrown by Officer Borisati in that video that is inconsistent with JSO training? No, sir. At the academy, I, I mean, I understand that it's one thing to teach a trainee the different types of punches, but do you also teach the trainees when they are allowed to use such force? We speak about, yes, about the use of force to overcome the resistance, we do. Okay, and what is the standard that you teach uh, in regards to how much force or, or when you can use force? Well, it, it's, it's based on their, uh, their, their level of resistance. What do you mean by that? So if somebody is actively, phys uh, actively physically resisting, tensing, pushing, pulling, bracing, blading their body, then you can use uh, the amount of force necessary to overcome that resistance. Okay. Does the amount of force, well, strike that. At the, at the academy, do you also teach how much force can be used in a particular situation? Um, well, we, what we teach at the academy is based off of the totality of the circumstances and the force that's reasonable to overcome the, resi the, the, the resistance. Totality of the circumstances? That's right. Have you formulated an opinion as to whether or not <coughs> officers, Bor Officer Borisati's actions 
of striking Miss Martinez between 12 and 14 times was objectively reasonable under the totality of the circumstances. I think from what I observed on that video, as soon as both of her hands were secured behind her back, all use of force stopped. So that was the force that was needed to, to place her in handcuffs. Okay. I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ask my question again. Have you formulated an opinion as to whether or not the 12 to 14 punches thrown by Officer Borisati were objectively reasonable yes. under the totality of the circumstances? Yes, sir. And what is that opinion? I think they were reasonable. The strikes. Okay. All 12 to 14 of them? Yes, sir. And you would, you would teach a JSO officer at the academy that the strikes used by Officer Borisati, as shown in this video, is appropriate and complies with JSO's policies and procedures. Objection to form. He's already explained that he can't tell exactly what the punches were, so it's a that's okay. That's setting a, aside the that's types an ambiguous of punches, question. Setting aside the types of punches, would you train your officers that the amount of strikes used by Officer Borisati, based on the circumstances as shown in this in this video, is objectively reasonable under the circumstances? I can say if we watch that video and I showed that to my recruits, that I could say the strikes that they used to get her hands behind her back were reasonable. But the, to say that every officer is going to have to use 14 strikes is, is unreasonable because we're all different. We're not created equal. And somebody could have much more training than Borsati. They could be bigger. They could be smaller. So we, as the dynamics of our body change, so does the use of force. I train a lot. so. Sure. I could overcome the resistance a little easier because of my training. Sure. And the circumstances can be different. 100%. Okay. What circumstances <clears throat> should be considered by an officer when, de when deciding whether or not to use force? To use force? To use force, yes. On an active resisting, uh, on an active resisting suspect, subject? Yes. Um, the environment, um, size? Um, training. What do you mean by training? How much training you have. As an officer? That's right. Okay. Would the circum... Would... If another officer was assisting you in the arrest, would that be a factor that... Uh, a, a fact that would factor into the totality well, it, of the it, circumstances? Of course, it could be. Okay. If the uh, arrestee was lying... Uh, in the prone position, yes, sir. Would that be a factor to be taken into consideration when an officer decides whether or not to use force? It would. Okay. And what is prone position? Laying face down. Okay. In the video, uh, at, at at least at some point, was Miss Martinez in the prone position? She was. Okay. Did Officer Borisati administer stir strikes to Miss Martinez while she was in the prone position? He did. If the arrestee was uh, brandishing a firearm or a weapon, would that factor into the totality of circumstances of whether or not to use force? Of course. Do you know if Ms. Martinez was in possession of a firearm or any weapon at the time of this incident? From, from reading reports, I do, but obviously not at that time. I don't, I don't understand your question. Did Ms. Martinez have a weapon with her during this first incident? Are you asking me because I've read it? I'm asking you, because you're the expert who's provided opinions in this case, if you know whether or not she had a weapon in her hand. I, I guess I'm trying to understand you. Are you asking me, did I know at the time of the incident she had it or after the fact to give you an opinion because of the officer's force that was used if they were armed, if she was armed? At the time you gave this opinion. Right. Were you aware whether or not Ms. I, Martinez had or did not have a weapon with her? I, yes, at the time that I gave that opinion, I was I knew that I was aware that she she was not was not in a, in possession of a weapon. Okay. Would the um, would the gender of the arrestee factor into the circumstances as to whether or not an officer should or should not use force? No. Okay. Would, would the physical size of the arrestee factor in the decision of whether or not an officer should or should not use force? 
Well, I mean, again, now we're getting into the totality of the circumstances and, you know, size, size does matter. Right. I, and, and what I'm trying to do is just figure out what these factors are that factor into the totality of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so far we've got training, we've got the size, we've got whether or not she has a weapon, whether or not another officer is present. Is there anything that I've left off? I'm sure. I mean, it's tense, uncertain, and rapid evolving. I mean, it's, there's, we could, I mean, I said environmental factors, they're on concrete. I mean, there's, we could, we could go on and list a life. Okay. And when we compile all those factors, does that determine whether or not the amount of force used was objectively reasonable under those circumstances? Of course. Okay. Now, you've seen the video. I have. What factors contribute to your opinion that Officer Boris Sadi's strikes, 12 to 14 strikes, were all objectively reasonable under the circumstances? The fact that she continued to actively physically resist. They were continually trying to get her hands behind her back. And as soon as both hands were secured behind her back, all use of force stopped. Did Officer Borisati strike Miss Martinez again after he pushed her head into the concrete or attempted to slam her head into the concrete? I'd have to watch it again, sir. That's fair enough. Would you like to do that? Sure. Okay. Can I touch your laptop? Absolutely. So, based on the video, did Officer Borisati strike Miss Martinez after he attempted to slam her head into the concrete? Direction to form. I observed him strike her after that. Okay, and it's your opinion that the strike that the, the strikes following the attempt to slam her head into the concrete were were in accordance with JSO policy and procedure. Reform. Yes. Okay. I'll show you now. We'll mark as plan of C. Do you recognize that document, sir? Um, I recognize it as a resting booking report with Myra Martinez's name on it. Okay. Have you seen that document before today? Um, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm 
I'm reasonably certain that I reviewed this with internal when I gave my testimony to Detective Strong. Okay. All right. Is writing, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, but is, is writing of reports something that is taught in the, at the police academy? Yes. Okay. Have you ever taught how to write reports? Nope. Can you tell me if, if it is in accordance with JSO's policy to have another officer write a narrative portion of an arrest and booking report and then sign, assign your name to it? Objection to form beyond the scope. He's not here to testify as an expert about anything other than the use of force in this incident. He's not here to talk about reports or other particulars of the orders and policies of JSO. Next question. Wow. Okay. You're in. You're here to testify as an expert witness, correct? On the use of force, yes. Okay. Did you? You testified that you might have reviewed the arrest and booking report prior to coming up with these opinions. Yes. Okay. Why? Why what? Why would you review the arrest and booking report when formulating your opinions? Because that has the elements of the crime and the elements of the in, uh, the incident. So does the arrest and booking report directly impact your opinions in this matter? It would. Does who wrote the arrest and booking report impact any or have any impact on any dis opinions you formulated in this matter? No. Have you formulated any opinions as it relates to Officer Vickery's actions at the Scores parking lot? Yes. Okay, what are they? Um, I think that Officer Vickery could have um, picked Miss Martinez, helped her, assisted her up instead of lifting her by her arms. That was the only thing about Vickery that I observed. Okay. Did Officer Vickery administer any strikes to Ms. Martinez? I don't recall. Okay. Did Officer Vickery attempt to slam Ms. Martinez's head into the concrete? Not that I observed on the videos that you've shown. Okay. What is the policy well, strike that. As part of the, well, let me ask you. Have you ever taught um, response to resistance? I have. Okay. Have you taught the course on writing or related to response to resistance reports? Never, I've never taught specifically writing. We talk about articulation in the classes that we teach. Okay. Do you teach when <coughs> writing an RTR report is required? That is taught. Okay. Have you ever taught that? No. Do you know when response to resistance reports are supposed to be written? I do. When? When use of force is used. How, how? And there's an injury sustained? I mean, if you have my policy, I can read it for you. I, I can't regurgitate it. Kirby, this is this is strain beyond his topic. Please move on. Okay, Steve. Let's move on to the second incident. Okay. The second incident. Where did that occur? Uh, the the back door of the pre-child detention facility. Okay, and what happened in the second accident? Um, Miss Martinez approached Borisati at the back door. I mean, it was, it was, there was a lot to it. I don't, I mean, how much do you want me to go into? Oh, just describe it as you can recall it. Um, she's standing at the back door of the jail. Um, 
swinging her purse for a period of time, walking back and forth uh, toward the, the window where the officers speak to the correctional officers. Uh, she's told a few times, or I don't know how many times, but more than once to stand back over by the door, or giving it some sort of direction, I guess. And uh, finally she, uh, I guess, Borsati begins to escort her back to where she needs to stand or where he wants her to stand. And she attempts to kick him and he strikes her. Okay, how many times? Uh, I don't know without reviewing it. More than one. Okay. You're here testifying as an expert witness, correct? I am. About the use of force used by Officer Borisati on these incidents? That's right. And you cannot tell me how many times Officer Borisati struck Ms. Martinez at the Sally Port? Sir, if you let me watch the video, I, I can. Well, this will be plaintiff's D. No, C. I thought you introduced the summation pages as A. Did you not? Yeah. Okay, so that would make this C. No. The summation pages were A. Mm -hmm. No? No, this is D. I'm sorry, I thought you said B. D. What was C? Ah, oh, the rest of the Okay, excellent. Thank you. Is this the video that you were referring to? Yes, sir. Now can you tell me how many times Officer Borisati struck Ms. Martinez at Sally Port? It appears at three. Did you formulate an opinion as to whether or not the punches thrown by Officer Borisati at the Sally Port area um, were in compliance with JSO's policy and procedure? Can I, can I read my report? Page we on there? Not sure. Sixty. I think it starts here. Yes, sir. All right, and we'll attach, 
we'll attach this, which you just reviewed, which would be page 60 and 61 of the summation report as plaintiff's E. Uh, Officer Rose, after reviewing your statement, yes, sir. can you tell me whether or not you formulated any opinions in regards to the use of force by Officer Borsati against Ms. Martinez at the Sally Port? Uh, yes, sir, I did formulate opinions, and as I stated back then, that uh, the amount of strikes was, was unreasonable, in my opinion. Okay. The amount of strikes were unreasonable? The, num the number of strikes. The number of strikes. Yes. And how many strikes were thrown in, in this location? Three. And how many strikes were thrown at, at the scores location? Uh, what did I say? Twelve to fourteen. I, I don't. I don't recall. Would this be an instance where the amount of force used would depend on the totality of the circumstances as to whether or not it's reasonable? As all force. Okay. Based on the totality of the circumstances as you understand it, have you formed an opinion? as to whether or not the punches thrown by Officer Borisati at the Sally Port were reasonable. I say that the number of strikes were unreasonable. What makes it unreasonable? Um, well, the fact that uh, she's in a secure location, so there's, she's already secured in handcuffs. So they're not trying to get her hands behind her back. She's already secured. Um, given that she did display active physical resistance still in handcuffs, they could use force against her. But again, once that resistance is overcome, the force should have stopped. Okay. Were all three punches an unreasonable use of force in your opinion? I'd have to, can I, can I watch it again? Um, I mean, so again, it, it just, it, it goes back. I don't think it's reasonable to say that you can never strike or use force against somebody in, in hand restraints because she just displayed active physical resistance in hand restraints. So, and again, not being there and in that situation at that time, as soon as the resistance, and this is what I teach, as soon as resistance is overcome, the use of force has to stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna ask you again. Okay. Uh, were all three punches thrown by Officer Borisati at the Sally Port, in your opinion, unreasonable based upon the totality of the circumstances? I think from what I understand that you're asking me, you're trying to get me to put a number, and I don't think that all three would have been unreasonable. I think the third one, I'd have, again, again, not being there, um, he was justified in using force. Why did you need, why would you need to be there? Well, because it's, I'm not, I'm not there, the one that's using force. I don't know the strike. I mean, the way that he conveyed it, he, she kicked him. She, uh, I, I can't remember the way that he, uh, he stated it. Um, a glancing blow was the first one, if I recall correctly. Um, uh, and then the second one, it struck him in his genitals. Um, she threw the kicks. Um, and again, it's, my training's different than Borisati's. In what way? I train every day, and I have for the last, 10 years and he's been a police officer at this time for outside of the academy a very short period of time I don't know the time okay so you train every day but you you cannot tell me whether or not all three punches were unreasonable because you weren't there is that correct yeah, so I think you're asking I don't know when he felt the resistance was overcome okay In, this, in the opinions that you gave earlier, I'm just going to read from page 60 here. You said, Rose explained that incident number two should have never occurred. I agree with that. What do you mean by that? Um, I think that as soon as she was walking around, we, they could have put her in a kneeling position or they, uh, some left her in the back of the car being observed. That, that incident, that, this incident at, uh, at the PTF, it didn't have to occur. It shouldn't have occurred. You know, have her being a kneeling position, have her sit, sit down so she limits her mobility. Um, you know, put her 
like I said, leave her in the back of the car, just observed. Keep her in a hobble. I mean, there's a bunch of different avenues that could have been taken sure. at that time. And does the availability of additional avenues, to use your words, or would that factor in the totality of the circumstances as to whether or not the amount of force used was reasonable? I don't understand. Sure, I'll, I'll try to rephrase it. If an officer has multiple options available that don't include the use of force, should that be factored into whether or not the officer's use of force was reasonable? Are you speaking, I, I'm speaking of the avenues that, that got us to the use of force. That's the avenues that I'm speaking of. If they would have kept her in a kneeling position or sat her down or put her in a hobble, then there's a good possibility that, I mean, without 20-20 hindsight, I don't know if, you know, force would have had to been used. I don't know. Um, the fact is, is I'm, I'm speaking of the force that once she displayed resistance, the force that was used, that's what I'm speaking. That's what I'm, maybe I'm not understanding you. Are you saying that the amount of force used was reasonable? No, I stated in the back of the, uh, I've already stated that I don't think that all of the strikes were necessary. Do you think any of the strikes were necessary? I do. I think, I do think that it, as soon as, like with the first strike, if she, if you're in a tense, uncertain, rapidly evolving situation and she, and she kicked at him, if he was to use a strike and as soon as she quit kicking and his resistance was overcome, you've overcome that resistance, then the force has to stop. So it's your opinion that the, the first punch was reasonable then? Protection to form. Is it? I'm asking I would you. say yes. Like anything beyond that, I would, I, like I said, I, I would be guessing because it, I don't know what he's feeling when he is touching her because that's when she is pinned against the wall. What are some of the circumstances that you're aware of that would make Officer Borisati's use of force as it relates to the first punch that he threw reasonable? The fact that she, from the, very, from the first punch, what, what is, say that again for me, please. What are, some of, what are some of the circumstances that would factor into the reasonableness of Officer Borisati's decision to, to punch her? That she, just, she kicked him. She, did, she used force against Officer Borsati. Okay. Was she handcuffed at the time? She was. Is that a factor that should be considered in the totality of the circumstances? It is. Okay. Are there, were there other avenues that Officer Borsati could have done as opposed to strike her that could have de-escalated the situation? Um, so when it comes to the use of force, sir, it's, uh, we have, you can use a baton, you can use pepper spray, you can use a taser, you can use strikes, you can use takedowns. And that's all consistent with overcoming active physical resistance. So it's not like we can't, it's, there's no use of force matrix like in the early 2000s where if they do this, you have to do this. We, you're, through FDLE, you're taught techniques and any one of those techniques or any one of those adjuncts you could use to overcome that resistance. Okay. So the strikes that he used, a strike in that situation, whether she's restrained or not, she displayed active physical resistance in restraints. So you can use a proper technique in, in accordance with FDLE and our training to overcome that resistance. Okay. If I understand your testimony correctly, then would that mean that Officer Borisati could have used a baton against her? He could have. Could he have used a uh, taser against her? He could have. Does the amount of force that he use, uses, well, I understand that he's maybe allowed to use any different type of, type of force, whether it be baton or punches or strikes or kicks or tasers or whatever else. Isn't it also true that the amount of force used has to be reasonable? Yes. Would it have been reasonable for Officer Borisati to strike Ms. Martinez with a baton? He could have. It would have been reasonable. Again, that's, that's a, uh, that is when it's an uh, uh, impact weapon is used to overcome active physical resistance. Oh, okay, I understand that it can be used to overcome active physical resistance. But it also has to be reasonable, correct? Agreed. Okay. 
would it have been reasonable for Officer Borisati to strike Ms. Martinez with a baton? I guess it depends on where he hit her. Did you ever tell Detective Strawn that you believed that Officer Borisati's first punch was objectively reasonable? Sorry, I, like I said, I don't know that. I think that interview was given four years ago. If I could read it again, I mean, I, I don't. I'll tell you what, let's just let's listen to it. Okay. You remember? You recall? giving a recorded statement? I do. Okay, and was that to Detective Strawn? It was. Okay. I'm gonna play it for you now. You let me know if you can hear it or okay. if I need to make it louder or anything like that. Yes, sir. I'm Detective S.A. Strawn, ID 7439 with the Internal Affairs Unit. Today's date is October 20th and the time is 9.08 a.m. This interview is being conducted at 501 East Bay Street in reference to administrative case number 16-00265. Present for this interview is myself and police officer Gabriel Rose. Officer Rose, prior to the start of the interview, did we review and you sign the member witness form, administrative rights form, and sworn statement affidavit? We did. Okay. Do you have any questions about those forms? No. All right, so you understand that the statement you're about to make regarding this investigation we made under oath? I do. Okay. And you also understand that making false statements under oath is a crime of perjury under Florida statute? Agreed. Okay, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Please state your full name, ID number, and current assignment. My name is Gabriel Martin Rose. My ID number is 63931. My current assignment is assigned to the police academy as the lead defensive tactics instructor. Okay. Um, how long um, have you been on the department? Ten and a half years. Okay. And at that time, how long have you been assigned to the police training academy? Eight and a half years. Okay. So in that role, you've um, had extensive training, and I heard you say that you're currently the lead instructor for the high liability area of defensive tactics. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, okay. So without going into every bit of your training, and that obviously can be provided upon request, but based on your background, um, in your training and the fact that you teach this area, the agency considers you a subject matter expert in defensive tactics. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And have you testified as a subject matter expert before? I have. Okay. Do you know about how many times? Uh, at least two other times that I can re recall immediately. Okay. Um, so specifically, we are going to talk today about three use of force incidents that occurred um, back on April 27th, um, 2016. Um, and before we went on record, you viewed the video recordings of those use of force incidents. Um, uh, the first disc was labeled case 2016-049, and I believe that's um, ISIU's case number. And the label on it was dash cam footage at scores 4923 West University Boulevard. The second disc that you viewed was case number 16-049, uh, and the label was suspect Myra Martinez backdoor with times. And the last disc was um, intake video at PTDF uh, incident with CO inside of jail. Um, do you recall viewing those I do. videos? Okay. Um, since we're going to break this down into three separate incidents because they all had different um, areas of defensive tactics that you'll need to speak about, we're going to call the incident at um, scores incident number one. Uh, and this incident involved Officer Borsade, Officer Vickery, and um, suspect Myra Martinez. Um, in viewing that video, uh, can you tell me how it coincides with our training, um, our policies and procedures uh, that you have experience in? So upon viewing the video, I saw two of our officers trying to subdue and gain control of a female suspect who is uncompliant with their, their, their commands. Uh, Vickery, 
I observed him conduct a takedown and go into immediately a three-point pin, which is one of the techniques that we teach in defensive tactics uh, to, to place a handcuff on a subject who is being non-compliant or a subject that's in a prone position because they're at a, a higher risk uh, for that use of force. Um, while doing so, uh, Officer uh, Borisau, Borisade, Borisade um, who was on the right side of the subject, um, was striking the, the female. Um, now we can use strikes as use of force um, or in use of force incidents, is that correct? That is correct. We actually. I'm going to pause it there for a second. Yes, sir. Um, is, so you can use strikes in a use of force incident, is correct? Yes, sir. Does the, how do I say this? Does the reasonableness, well, does, does the use of force still have to be reasonable? Of course. Okay. So just because you can, or just because somebody is actively resisting and you can use a baton, you should only use the baton if it's reasonable to use the baton. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, if, if it's not reasonable, why would, you wouldn't pull your baton out. Sure. Just like, just like striking somebody, right? It, it has to be reasonable. Correct? Even if somebody's actively resisting you, if you strike somebody, it's got to be reasonable, correct? To use force, it's going to be reasonable. If it's not reasonable, then it's battery. Do you know if Officer Borsati was charged in this? I, I, sir, I, I don't know. We teach different kinds of strikes. The strikes that were used were, uh, there was punches thrown, there was hammer fist thrown, all of which we teach and have taught and are approved by FDLE, and that's what we stick to in our, our curriculum. Okay, so you went, went through a couple of different types of punches or strikes right. uh, that, were, that, that were used by Officer Borisati. Yes, and you sir. said that you teach those strikes in, right. in, at your academy, correct? We do. Okay. That is, that is, but you also teach officers when they can and cannot use those strikes, correct? I don't understand what you're, what you're asking about cannot. I mean, we teach in defensive tactics, it's control techniques to overcome the use of force. So if there's no resistance being exhibited, there'd be no reason to use force. Okay. So if they're displaying active physical resistance, like I said earlier, you can use strikes, you can use the baton, you can use OC spray, you can use takedowns, you can use, pepper, I mean, uh, the taser. I, I, so I, I don't, I, I guess I'm, I don't understand what, why, what you're asking me as far as like to using force. Okay, I'll, tr I'll, try to, I'll try to rephrase it because I think this matters and I want to get this right. I, I understand that you teach them the, the physical mechanics of how to strike somebody, um, how to do a hammer fist, how to do a punch, how to do a takedown maneuver, how to do a three-point pin, how to do all of this, the physical acts of doing sure. these things. Do you also teach your officers at the academy when they can use these techniques yes okay when can these techniques be used when they experience or they uh, encounter somebody that is displaying these specific techniques when they're displaying active physical resistance okay under any circumstance what would be another circumstance I don't I, I guess that's what I, I'm sorry I'm, I'm not trying to be evasive in your questioning I just I truly don't understand what what you're trying to ask me as far as any circumstance when it comes to use of force okay I'll ask, it to, I'll ask it to you this way. If an 80-year-old woman was actively resisting arrest okay. and, and you were the arresting officer, sure. she is actively resisting arrest, and by the letter of the policy, it would seem like you would have the ability to use strikes or use punches That's or right. use your baton. But just because you have the ability, or just because the letter of the policy says that you're allowed to do it, 
Are you saying that it would be okay for you to pull out the baton and, and hit that 80-year-old woman? Me personally? Yes. I would not hit anybody with a baton. Okay. What I'm, what I'm getting at is, is there some sort of circumstance, there's, there's, there's other factors that determine whether or not it's reasonable or not. Is that correct? Force, yes. Yes. So it's not singularly, if they were actively resisting arrest, what we did was automatically okay, correct? I'm not sure that's a question. Okay. Does the fact, the singular fact that somebody is actively resisting arrest give the officer, as you teach them, the authority to use physical force against that arrestee. Does it give us the authority to? Yeah. If somebody is displaying active physical resistance by law and by our training, we are allowed to use the force reasonable and necessary to overcome that resistance to affect our job. Okay, thank you. But the amount of force used still has to be reasonable, correct? Agreed. And necessary. Yeah. And, and necessary. 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 Okay. Very good. Necessary. So in, in the incident, um, did you, I, I, I did not, and I just want to make sure that, that you didn't view Officer Vickery delivering any strikes to the subject. I didn't notice that. The only thing that I saw Officer Vickery do again was, uh, was take her to the ground and go into the three-point pin and then place his knees upon her back. Um, then from there, he, he got on the radio and decided to call him you know, to HQ for, for whatever reason. Okay. Um, and when you say Officer Vickery took a, took Martinez to the ground, she was in a seated position. So when we say take her to the ground, we're actually talking from the seated position to a prone To a prone stomach. position. That is correct. Uh, so we brought her from this, a seated position to a prone position to, uh, to try to uh, the apply cuffs to her. Okay. Um, all right. So other than um, the straight arm bar takedown to, to the ground, uh, that was really the only use of force that Vickery is appeared to to be applying to Martinez in that video, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, so then we need to address Officer Borisade's um, use of force. Um, now if punches and hammer strikes are appropriate in this situation for a subject that's non-compliant... If you formulated an opinion as to whether or not punches and hammer strikes were appropriate in this circumstance, they would have been. Okay. Why is that? Because that's a technique that's taught to overcome active physical resistance. Do you have an opinion as to whether or not the use of punches or hammer fist was reasonable under the, uh, the incident at scores? To try to get her hands behind her back, they would be reasonable techniques to use to put somebody, take somebody into custody that's displaying active physical resistance. And under the circumstances, you have an opinion that Officer Borisati's strikes were reasonable? Yes, sir. Was there any force that Borisati used in that incident that you did not think was appropriate within training or within policy? Yes, we've never taught and it's not in policy for, for this type of force to be used, not a non-deadly force encounter to attempt to slam a, subset, a subject's head or a suspect's head onto the, to the asphalt or the pavement or concrete or anything like that. Okay. So in the video, I believe we view Officer Borsade um, attempting to um, strike Martinez's head into the pavement approximately three times. Correct. Now, in viewing the video closely, I think we determined that her arm was probably underneath her. I, I, I completely agree. Uh, from Upon viewing the video, uh, he did attempt to strike her head on the, on the pavement three times. As soon as he stopped attempting to hit her head on the concrete, you notice him go to uh, grab her arm, her right arm, and pull it behind her back in an attempt to, uh, to place that hand in the restraint that Officer Vickery already had the first restraint applied onto her left arm. Okay. So I do believe that her hand struck, or correction, her head struck her arm and not the pavement. And not the pavement. Okay. Do you know that to be a fact? Or is that just your belief? It's my opinion. Based on what? Uh, 
the fact, like I said in the uh, in the statement, that he pulled her hand out from under her head, and then if you look at her pictures, there was no bruises or abrasions that would be consistent with somebody striking their head multiple times on the concrete. Okay. After he pulled her arm back behind her, did he administer additional strikes to Ms. I, I believe I, uh, if I think, I think yes, we stated that earlier. He did. Okay. Um. Then, uh, then we, uh, I think in the video, the striking begins around 17, 13, 30 seconds. Is that what you also observed? Yes, I believe that's okay. like the first strike, 17, 30, 30. And it continues for about 20 seconds, give or take? Give or take, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and then when, more, uh, I'm sorry, Martinez is handcuffed or appears to be handcuffed, um, we don't witness any continued or we don't observe any continued striking at that point is that what you saw that is correct once they had her restraints the force stopped the force stopped yes ma'am um so then victory picks her up by her arms correct um now obviously not a class room or textbook um way to pick someone up sure but is would you Thing that it appears to be appropriate I, I didn't see anything I, again it's not the textbook way um, but of course it, it's not training either it's somebody who they were just involved in a force uh, incident with um, but I didn't see anything wrong with the way that he stood her up uh, he could if, if Borisati should have stayed with him and assisted with that take up and had more hands on her but uh, but victory did nothing wrong in my opinion Okay. On, on picking her off the ground after being restrained. Okay, so a after um, Martinez is stood up to her feet, um, she mule kicks Vickery. And did you observe I, that? I observed her uh, uh, mule kick Vickery, correct? Okay. And um, from that moment... Do you recall observing Miss Martinez mule kick Officer Borsati? Where? At the at scores. I do not recall that. I recall her mule kicking Vickery. Okay. Then the they uh, struggle with her again. She's she's starting to not comply with uh, being walked over to the back of the police car and, and taken into custody. So, um, from my observations, and uh, and you can correct me if, if you don't view the same thing, but it appears to me that that the momentum of the struggle takes them into the hood of a car that was there. I, I agree with that. So she attempts to mule kick him. He does a pretty decent job trying to evade that mule kick. Of course, he's off balance. He still is holding her. Um, as, as we're trained to do, once you have somebody handcuffed, you may in physical contact and positive control of them at all times. And it looks like the momentum. If you have some, and I don't want to make sure I got this right, but are you saying that if somebody's in handcuffs, you should maintain contact with them at all times? So I think, um, in what situation? As you just said on your I did. statement. Um, so in that context is if I just get finished struggling with somebody, uh, we were just involved in a struggle, I place them in handcuffs, I will stay in direct control of them until I put them in the back of my car. That is correct. Okay. Of that is what forced her onto the hood. They didn't ride her onto the hood. They immediately picked her back up and took her to the patrol cars. What it appeared to be actually we lose vision of her. As soon as that's done, they go between other cars. But there was no other additional strikes rendered at that time. Okay. Um, now, you've also read the um, response to resistance um, witness report that was uh, authored by Officer Vickery. Is that correct? I have. Yes, I have. Okay. Um, and we're looking for the case number of that so we can put that on record. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, and we have in, in the interview room a, a copy of this report um, for Officer Rose to refer to. And the CCR number listed at the top is 2016-027-0037. Um, it's authored by uh, Officer Nathan Vickery, and it was reviewed through Officer Vickery's chain of command. Um, Officer Rose, in reading this uh, uh, report, is it 
consistent with the information that you saw in the video? It, it appears consistent from, his statement is consistent from what I observed. Okay. And when we train um, to complete use of force reports or, or document use of force incidents, um, does the report appear to be in compliance with what we would uh, train in like a report writing setting? Absolutely. Okay. Are you qualified to give an opinion as to whether or not an officer did or did not comply with the response to resistance reports requirements? I'm not an expert in that. But. Are you familiar with the requirements? Uh, requirements as far as what? When to write a response to resistance reports and under what circumstances they're required? I, I, I'd like to review the policy 551 and I could I could give you all of them. Okay. We'll continue on. Was there anything in the report that you noted that would be a violation of policy or um, in, in a use of force setting um, or any any details that you think are appropriate to point out on record? Are you qualified to give an opinion? as to whether or not a response to resistance report was completed in accordance with the policy of JSO. Do you have the RTR report you'd like him to review? Of course I do. I'm just, but I'm asking him if he's qualified well, to give us about that specific one, not in general. Your question wasn't specific to that report. Was was specific to that report. Okay. Sure. Here we go. We'll mark this as, are we on F now? But I would again note that this is beyond the scope of what he's being offered to testify to. Okay. Do you recognize that report, sir? I mean, I, I, I recognize it as a response to resistance for Viewport for Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Okay. Are you qualified to give an opinion as to whether or not this response to resistance report authored by N.H. Vickery uh, on April 29, 2016 does or does not comply with JSO policy and standards? He was involved in an incident and he completed an RTR. That's, it's, can you provide the opinion as whether or not he completed an RTR accurately and completely in accordance with JSO's policies? Kirby, that is not what he's here to testify about. I'm just trying to find the bounds of what, what he... Well, he's not here to testify about. about report writing. He's here to testify about the force incidents in this case. And that was the, 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 the entire focus of his uh, report that's in the summation that was uh, referenced in our disclosure. So you've had your opportunity to talk to now three people about report writing. That's not what this witness is here about. Okay, we'll move along then. Uh, I, I don't think that anything violates any policy from, from what I've not only observed, but from the way he articulated in his report. Uh, is it fair that I won't hear you say that at trial? What's that? That he did, I'll rewind it. That, that would be a violation of policy or um, in, in a use of force setting um, or any, any details that you think are appropriate to point out on record? Uh, the, uh, I, I don't think that anything violates any policy from, from what I've not only observed but from the way he articulated in his report. Uh, there may have been some things that, that could have been... That's an entirely different, different question. Um, you know, with, with the use of... He's using Steve, information... Are you just going to continue to interrupt well, me? Well, I am going to interrupt you because you're moving this in a direction that is that is uh, not what he's here for. He referenced in that statement that he used information from that report to formulate an opinion about the use of force. Not that he read the report and 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 uh, has an opinion that the, that the report is jam up perfect. And that's the question you're asking him. That is the question I'm asking. Well, and that's not what he's here to talk about. Oh, he can say you that. You have your com comment about, oh, I'm not going to hear you say that at trial. He may very well say at trial. I read the report. I factored it into my evaluation of whether the use of force was appropriate. Nothing wrong with that. What's your question? 
I've got plenty of questions, Steve, and we'll get to them. Please. Unbelievable. Force. Um, sometimes it appears violent. Force can be violent, but it's not always wrong for, for that to occur. Okay. And when we're talking about um, Vickery, be, uh, or I'm sorry, the appropriate use of force, we're talking about specifically Officer Vickery. Is that, that is correct? correct. Okay. Can I ask what the question um, is of this nonstop running of a, of a narrative? Do you have a question about anything in this interview? I've asked multiple questions well, during this interview, you, Steve. Are you going to play the entire interview and then just pick out when you want to ask a question? Probably. Well, it's your time to waste. Okay. Thank you. The use of force would have been appropriate up until the point where he attempted to strike her head against the paper. I 100% agree. Uh, prior to the attempting of... I'll actually back up a little bit because... Okay. And when we're talking about um, Vickery, be, uh, or I'm sorry, the appropriate use of force, we're talking about specifically Officer Vickery. Is that, that is correct? correct. Okay. Um, and just to clarify, Officer Borisade's use of force would have been appropriate up until the point where he attempted to strike her head against the pavement. I 100% agree. Uh, prior to the attempting of striking her head on the pavement, and after that, he was in compliance with what we teach. It was at that point that that is we don't train that. Okay. Is there any other information about incident one that you feel? And that's, are your opinions today consistent with the opinions that you gave back then? Yes, sir. So the 12 to 14 strikes, reasonable under the circumstances. That's right. Oh, like we need to place since we're done with incident one, it's 310. He needs to make a phone call as we talked about earlier. Can we take okay. a break? Sure. Thanks. Okay, one off record at 311. Okay. We are back on the record at 321. Okay. Rose, we spoke earlier about the types of force that Officer Borisati used at the Sally Court. From your review of the video, can you just tell me what types of force Officer Borisati used? Strikes. Were those strikes open-fisted or closed-fisted? Uh, it's, it's, it's truly, truly hard to tell. So are you, are you unaware of the type of strikes that he did? That's right. And I believe that you testified that the type, you can, you can use strikes if somebody is actively resisting arrest. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you formulated an opinion as to whether or not the amount of strikes used by Officer Borisati was in compliance with the policy of JSL? That's what I... At are which are time? we at the Sally Port? At Sally Port. So, I, like I stated earlier, I don't think that all of the strikes were necessary. Okay. And if it's not necessary, then it would be not be in compliance with JSO policy to do it then, correct? All of the strikes, yes sir, that'd be correct. Which strikes were unreasonable at Sally Port? Sir, like I stated earlier, I wasn't there, so I don't know when he stopped feeling her bracing, tensing, pushing, pulling, uh, resisting ag against his efforts to push her against the wall. So again, for me, from what I observed on the video from the Sally Port, he attempts to escort her, which is another form of force, escort position. He tries to escort her back. Um, it appears that they stumble over a bag or something that's on the ground. They lose their footing. She goes against the, she falls against the wall with him on her. She kicks at him a couple times and he delivers multiple strikes, I believe three. Um, so when that resistance is overcome, immediately he should stop the use of force. After which punch was the resistance overcome? So again, like I stated, with that, without being there, Okay. And, and feeling, you know, it, it's, I, I, could, I could grab a hold of 
Steve's arm and there'd be, there's nothing there, but just, if he was to pull away, you wouldn't be able to see him, but I could feel that. Are you saying that you're unable to give an opinion as to whether or not the amount of force used was reasonable because you weren't there? Sir, I, all I'm stating is that I told you I don't know which, do, do I think that all three strikes were necessary? I don't. I, I, I've stated that numerous times. But you're asking me to put a number on which one was and, and I don't know the exact, I don't know whether it was two or three or, or after the fact. I just, uh, I feel like the resistance could have been overcome with the, with the first strike. And you teach this at the JSO Academy. That's correct? right. But even though we have video, you can't tell me which one was reasonable and which ones weren't reasonable. Or can you? So like I stated, if he's, from what I've, what I've viewed, you're asking me, I, I've, I've stated multiple times that I don't know if it was the second or third one that if he's still, again, I, I've never specifically spoken to Borisati. If he's, still in, if he's still feeling active physical resistance, then you, are still, you can still deliver strikes. Uh, from what I observed, once she's against the wall, there was no reason to deliver multiple strikes once he had her pinned against the wall. Why would you need to speak with Officer Borsati? I, I just said I've never spoken to him. I know. Why I'm would like you need to? I've read it. I've only read his reports. So again, mm -hmm. I think there's learning in this for everybody. What do you mean by that? I think that we can always learn from good or bad situations. And I think if you get somebody who's involved in one of these these situations, I, I think that everybody else can, can learn and benefit from it, good or bad. What do you think the lesson should be learned from the Sally Port incident? So for me, it's, uh, I think training is paramount. You've got to continue to train. Um, I, I don't think it's, uh, you, you've asked about, um, Size, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think he only outweighed her by like six pounds, whether he was taller or not. Um, so environmental factors, as far as use of force goes, you know, sex comes into play. Um, Any time in the 20 years that I've been a police officer, um, the most uncomfortable times of using force has been against a female because I was raised you don't put your hands on a woman, so you tend to go a little lighter on a female than you would a male because. I was raised that way, and I think a lot of males that we encounter with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office are too, um, because if they had a history of domestic violence, they, they wouldn't be in our program. Um, and, and I also see like when you're encountering a, a, a smaller framed individual, that uh, again, it, it's, its size doesn't matter to an extent, um, because you're, you are going softer because you're worried about the injury, so you're not using the, the amount of force you properly should quicker to, to take them into custody so it's not a prolonged event. Okay. You said that, that, that training is paramount. It is. Did Officer Borsati follow his training uh, in the Sally Port? Well, again, so she kicked at him. He could have, he, those strikes that he, so uh, uh, what part, what part? At any point during the Sally Port incident, did Officer Borisati fail to follow his training? Uh, yes. Which part? We've never taught putting a purse in somebody's handcuffs. I'm sorry? Like interlacing a purse in somebody's hands when they're restrained, that's never been taught. Okay. Is, there, is that the only way that Officer Borisati failed to follow and again, his training? It's, it's, if he felt those, when, once she was restrained, which again, you can display active physical resistance if you're in, in handcuffs, uh, we show videos of that. Um, if she kicked at him, he could use a strike or whatever force was necessary. But if you look at the video, when he strikes her, she's against the wall. There's no more strikes being given on her end. So the force should have stopped as soon as she quit striking. So is it your opinion that Officer Borisati failed to follow his training at the Sally Port? Yes.
Our officers also trained on techniques that don't involve force that can de-escalate a situation? Techniques? As far as... Sure. I mean, is there any sort of de-escalation techniques that officers are taught that they, don't involve using physical force? They, they do. Officers do get de-escalation training. Okay. As a matter of policy, are officers supposed to try or supposed to de-escalate the situation? If it's safe to do so. Okay. Based on your review of the video, would you say that it would have been safe for Officer Borisati to attempt to de-escalate the situation in, at Sallyport? As I said earlier, I think that there's some things that could have been done different. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. What are some of the techniques Officer Borisati could have used to de-escalate the situation? At he, Sally Port. He should have put her on her knees, should have kept her in the back of the car, kept her in a hobble, or she's still being violent. If you have to tar her, put her in a total appendage restraint. Anything else? Uh, I, mean, I mean, sir, I mean, it's, again, I, I don't know. We can casual conversation. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what all you're looking for. I mean, like I said before, you could have her sit on her feet so then she's not moving around. She's not swinging her purse. You know, it's keep her in your car. If, if you know she's already got a propensity of violence and being belligerent, then why, why subject everybody else to that? Based on your review of the video, review of the video and the review of the port, reports authored in this case, uh, do you know if at any point in time Officer Borisati attempted to de-escalate the situation at this alley port prior to striking her? Sorry, I'd, I'd have to, to read it. I, I, I know just from watching the video, multiple, you know, he told her to go stand over there. I mean, that's why he's trying to speak to the correctional officer behind the glass at, at the back door of the jail. Um, but as far as, like, specific de-escalation techniques, sir, I, I, I can't answer that without reviewing. What would you like to review? I mean, whatever I'd have to read. I mean, if, if he specifically said it, I don't remember or recall if he specifically stated that he attempted to de-escalate the situation with her at any one of his reports. Is he required to attempt to de-escalate the situation? Well, we'd always like to, to de-escalate. Nobody, I don't think, I don't, I don't think he woke up that morning wanting to use force against anybody, and then it happened. So, of course, our job, if we showed up, I mean, our, our de-escalation, our physical presence is, is where it starts. You know, then our verbal commands, you know, that's all forms of, of de-escalation. You know, it's trying to gain compliance through, our, through our, our presence being there. You know, if we have to speak more sternly, then we do so. And then if they continue to show active physical resistance, then we can go into counter moves, countermeasures, strikes, things of that nature. But I think if there's an opportunity, then you should always de-escalate. Do you teach de-escalation techniques at the academy? Uh, not specifically to the class, like I, that's somebody else's area of focus. Yeah. I'm sorry, were you, was the question, did he teach it or does UJSO teach it? C teach it. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think you said we don't wake up with the intention of using forces or something along those lines. I did. Okay. Uh, paraphrase. I mean, I don't remember the exact quote, but sure, something along those. That's lines. right. So, okay. Um, if an officer has shown that he's willing to use force on a particular arrestee or suspect, is he more likely or less likely to engage in the use of force with that same suspect? Again. Hold on, say that again? Sure. If an officer has engaged in the use of, use of force incident with a suspect or arrestee, is he more or less likely to engage in additional use of force incidents with that same arrestee? I'd, I'd, I'd have no, I, I don't have statistics or anything like that that would, would prove one way or the other. Sorry. Okay, that's fine.
and I know that you haven't spoken with Officer Borsati, and I know that you weren't there at the scene that day, mm -hmm. but based on your review of the video and the reports, and based on the fact that you're testifying as an expert witness in this case, can you tell me whether or not uh, the, amount, the amount of force used by Officer Borisati was reasonable at the Sally Port? I, I said it was not. Okay. Same question as it relates to the scores parking lot. Okay. And I, I know you didn't talk to Officer Borsati, and I know that you weren't at the scores parking lot, but based on your review of the video and your review of the, port, the reports that have been submitted in this case, can you tell me whether or not the amount of force used by Officer Borisati at scores was reasonable? The total use of force? Total use of force. No one specific point. Total use of force. Was it, was it reasonable under the totality of the circumstances? So, like I stated earlier, with the exception of attempting to slam her head on the concrete, it was reasonable. That act was unreasonable in my opinion. Okay. So is that a no? That, right. It was not reasonable. The amount of force that Officer Borisati used at scores was not reasonable. The total amount of force, like the totality of that, that specific incident, was that, that specific act of him, like if he would have never attempted to push her head on the concrete and he delivered two more strikes as a, or three more strikes as opposed to attempting to get her head down and again, reading his, his explanation, um, I, I now understand on, on what his rationale was beside, behind putting her head down to try to get her hand. Um, but those additional strikes would not have made it unreasonable. It was the act of, again, is that what we train we don't train to attempt to hit somebody's head on concrete in a non-deadly force situation. Okay. So that would be unreasonable then? That's right. Yes. Okay. And why does that matter that the amount of force used at both locations was unreasonable? Objection to form. Does There's it violate JSO policy well, if the amount of force used is unreasonable? We, we to be in compliance with JSO, with Florida State statute, with, with our training, we use, we teach, and we only will teach using force that is reasonable and necessary to overcome resistance. And Officer Borisati did not use force that was reasonable to overcome resistance, is that correct? That's right. At both locations? At, at times, yes. You said that there, there's a learning opportunity in this for everybody, correct? I did. What should we learn from both instances as a whole? To use a force that's reasonable to overcome resistance. To okay. stick to your, to use a force that's reasonable to overcome the resistance. Uh, to stick to, to your current training practices. To follow to seek your out, training? To seek out additional training. Following a, a use of force incident, and I, Steve, I don't know where the line is here, so just Bear with me on this, but following a use of force incident, do you train people at the academy when they should or should not provide medical assistance? Me specifically? Is that taught in the defensive tactics course? Uh, so the only thing as it pertains to, uh, to my training that I'm specific lead of as far as medical attention goes is that you will use the force that's necessary and reasonable to overcome the resistance. Once that resistance is overcome, um, and the subject is secured, and it's safe to do so if they're requesting uh, medical uh, treatment or if they're in need of medical treatment, we will render that aid as soon as it's safe to do so. Do you know if Ms. Martinez was provided medical aid after the SCORES incident? Um, only because I read that she was not, as far as I can recall. To answer, no, I, I, I don't know. 100% with absolute certainty. Okay. Do you know if Ms. Martinez ever received any medical treatment following any incident? 
uh, from what I recall upon reading one of the reports, and I can't remember which one it was, I believe JFRD, Jackson Fire Rescue Department, responded to the back door of the PTDF. Do you, have, you, have you formed an opinion or are you planning on forming an opinion as to whether or not the, the medical care or lack thereof provided to Ms. Martinez was or was not in accordance with JSO policies? Sir, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Um, if, you know, again, for me, what Officer, I teach... Officer, you're just asking yes or no, are you going to offer that opinion? S repeat the question. Are you going, as an expert witness in this case, are you going to be offering an opinion as to whether or not the medical care provided to Ms. Martinez following these incidents was, was or was not in accordance with JSO policies and procedures? I'm not going to render an opinion. Okay. And that's, that's fine. Okay. I'm going to play a little bit more of this video, just about five minutes of it. And I've got some questions for you. And I'll pause them and ask them as we go, okay? Let's move on to incident two, and that incident occurred in the Sally Port of the pretrial detention facility. Um, at that point, uh, Martinez was handcuffed and awaiting entry inside the facility. Um, during, during that video, the incident starts, um, at, I guess, uh, at the time on the video, it appears that the incident starts at 1.35.21 as Martinez is walking or encroaching on the area where the officers are submitting paperwork into um, the COs that are inside the window um, who are starting the booking process. Uh, is that what you observed? That is correct. You said 1 hour, 35 minutes, 21 seconds. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, and that is not the actual time on the video, but it's the actual time of the recording. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's not the time stamp, meaning 7 p.m. or a.m. Yes. It's the running time. The running time. Thank you. Um, so what what did you observe um, after Martinez begins to encroach on um, the officers that are standing there, Board Sade being one of them? Um, I observed her. Well, can we go prior to sure. that time? Sure. So uh, for whatever reason, um, and it's something that we don't teach, but her hand, her purse was cuffed to her, I guess would be the best way to say it. They had her hands restrained behind her back. Her, her, her purse was linked with her arms in the cuffs. That's not something that, that we do teach, but that is, and, that's what occurred. And why would that be an issue? Uh, well, first of all, although her hands are behind her back and you can see her in the video, she, she could technically use that as a weapon. Uh, From your review of the video, did you ever see Miss Martinez use her purse as a weapon? I, no which is, you know, you notice her swinging around in, in her state of, of, of her mental state. She's, she's using it to swing around, and not only is she almost hitting other officers, but there's other suspects, other arrestees are in the back waiting to be entered into the jail that she's almost hitting. Um, I, I don't know who the subject was, but he had the jersey with Smith on multiple times to look like her purse, you know, hit him as well. So that's not something that we train, um, but it occurred so she begins to uh, to walk toward the officers um, at that one hour, 35 minutes and 21 second mark that we spoke of. Um, that's when uh, Boris Sade, is that right? Yes. He engages, he grabs her, he pushes like, hey, you don't need to come over here. Um, he begins to push her back by the Sally port door. Um, as he is doing that, he attempts to push her and restrain her against the wall which, again, there's no issues with force there. Um, he's trying to restrain her. Maybe a better option would be have her go to her knees, put her knees together, sit back on her feet. Well, now she can't swing the purse, and she can't what, what ended up happening, him, her kicking him or attempting to kick him. Um, so at the uh, about the 27 mark, one hour, 35 minutes, 27 seconds, I believe is when it was, mm -hmm. um, she kicks him or attempts to kick him numerous times, and then he begins to strike her. Um, 
Do you know if Miss Martinez actually made contact with Officer Borsati when she kicked him or not? From personal knowledge or just from what I've read? Either, either. It was stated from his report that the, uh, the second kick struck him. Numerous times. I, I, don't, I don't have the count on my notes. Okay. Um, so what we observe is, is him, uh, her kicking him approximately two times, um, maybe three. Um, it's unclear whether she makes contact with, with, his, per, with his body. Correct. And then he strikes her approximately two to three times um, in the upper torso. It's a bad camera angle, so we can't really observe um, exactly where those strikes were delivered. Right. Was it two or three? And we can watch it again and get a correct count. Um, and that whole incident takes um, approximately three to four seconds. Three to four seconds. Okay. Okay. So in that three to four second time period okay so you have a, you have a handcuffed suspect who's pushed against a wall with their front facing the officer yes. giving them the ability to kick Correct. which she did at that point was the suspect was handcuffed inside a facility um, that would you consider the strikes delivered at that point to be appropriate use of force? I think that the man, that he could have done better things that that should have never occurred. He should have faced her away at a minimum. Um, do I always think it's wrong and do I think to, to paint ourselves in a corner say you will never hit somebody that's restrained? I think that's false. Okay. Um, but I think the repeated strikes or would make this wrong do so when you say it's the repeated strikes that you think makes this wrong what do you mean by that so as i stated earlier sir that um and and as i stated in the video that it's 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 unreasonable to say that we will never use force against somebody who's restrained provided they are using and displaying active physical resistance or some sort of resistance it always has to be active physical because there's videos where people miss guns and deadly forces used with people who are handcuffed. So with that being said, um, if they display active physical resistance, you could use a, 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 a technique to overcome that resistance. So again, the repeated strikes, and when I say that, that the repeated strikes was unreasonable, that one of the strikes, if that overcame the resistance, like I said, the one strike he hits her, she's against the wall, she's not delivering, she's not, it doesn't appear that she's resisting. Again, I've never spoken to Borsati to know if he felt her pressuring up against he, is she trying to push against him? I don't know. But the repeated strikes, in my opinion, were unreasonable in that situation. We never hit a handcuffed suspect? I think we absolutely can. And why is that? Um, I think if it's a spontaneous response, if somebody tries to kick at you and you do immediately respond with, the, with a strike, then I, or, you know, again, force, it's, it's a fluid and dynamic situation. And, and we, we, we can't sit outside and say, I would never do this because we're not at the moment. We don't understand the emotions. So I think uh, Borisade, you know, maybe should have separated himself from that situation and done some other things. Yes, I know he was a young officer, but that's not an excuse for slamming a victim or a suspect or a victim's head, whatever we're referring to her as, on the concrete. Um, uh, no, that did occur in the second incident. No, no, no. Of course, I'm just saying it, there was definitely, if you if you look at the onset to that, there was there was some emo there was an emotional. He was having an emotional incident. He's probably never in his life experienced a situation like that before. Mm -hmm. He was having an emotional experience. Uh, are, at the academy, do you teach police officers how to overcome these emotions? Do I? Is it taught as part of the curriculum at the police academy how to overcome the emotions when engaging in a use of force incident? So I think it's different for everybody. Um, I'm asking you if it's taught at the academy. Specific classes on overcoming the emotions when dealing with use of force? Yeah. No. Do you think that that could be something that we could learn from this? I do. Police officers who haven't been exposed or engaged in use of force incidents before, can they be overwhelmed by the situation? I think veteran officers can also become overwhelmed in situations if they've never encountered it before. Fair enough. Is it fair to say that emotions can run high in these use of force incidents? I think reasonable is a better word. 
than fair. Okay. Okay. What do you mean by that? I, I, I don't think, like when we get, oh, is it fair? I, I don't think this, it's, you know, it's, when you start talking about fair, I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of life is fair, but it's, it's what you're dealt with, so we deal with what we have. So I think it's... Okay. Do you think that Officer Borisati's emotions factored into his decision to use force against Ms. Martinez? I do. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your answer. Do I personally think he was emotional in this? Yes. I do. And do you think that his emotions impacted his decision on whether or not to use force? Objective form. Possibly. Okay. But there's and I, but there's nothing taught at the academy as to how to deal with that, the, the emotions of a use of force incident as we sit here today? So we have, there. I mean, they have other officers teach stuff and we talk about, you know, we have to detach ourselves emotionally. You know, it's unfortunately, and that, that's something I specifically say to my recruits, okay guys, it's a job, it's what we do, it's not who we are, but unfortunately it's, what I would venture to say you probably introduce yourself as an attorney, but it's not who you are, it's what you do. But there's an attachment to that. So for me, my name is Gabriel Rose. I'm a police officer. It's not what I do. I'm much more proud to be a father than I ever am a cop, and I've been a cop and a pretty good one for 20 years. But I think when you're involved in those situations, there is an emotional attachment. Somebody just tried to strike him. He's never experienced that before. I would venture to say that he has never had a woman try to strike him before. So I think there's an emotional attachment to the scenario that he's, he's, he's trying to navigate through that for the first time. And it's super cliche, and I know you've heard it, but it's, you know, experience is something you need you know, you get after you need it. He didn't have this. Right. Right, now I get that. But do, do you think that, that JSO could do a better job of training people well, for preparing them to engage in these so I, I think, encounters? I think that we do a pretty good job of preparing people, but again, until you're in those situations, you don't know how you're going to act. You know, I've had friends who have killed multiple people, and every single shooting was different, and they reacted different every single time. To say there's one like, here's the stamp, and this is what you're going to do, you don't know. Sure. You don't know. So, I, I mean, I think, you know, we talk about the use of force, and we talk about the physiological stressors to use of force encounters and what to expect when you feel your heart rate, when you get the tunnel vision, when you get the auditory exclusion. Uh, you know, we talk about that, but, um, but again, it's a, it's a talk. And until you've ever been in those tense, uncertain, rapidly evolving questions, until you're scared, you don't know how you're going to act. Okay. Okay. You know? So if I'm understanding you correctly, you do sort of train them to, to prepare for these emotional encounters, okay. yes, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. However, you're also testifying that you believe that Officer Borisati's emotions might have played a role um, and as to the amount of force that he's used. My question is, did he follow his training in letting the emotions determine his actions? You should never act off of emotion. Okay. And you believe that he, at least in part, operated off of emotion? I do. Um, and I think just the snowball effect upon that, I think uh, with the lack of experience that he had, because he was a young officer, he was a young man, um, I think he was probably overwhelmed. And that's what led to this. Uh, but yes, we do. It is not always wrong to hit somebody who is restrained. Okay, and it's not always against policy to hit someone who's restrained. Um, and we would train for that if the use of force was appropriate. If the use of force was appropriate, absolutely. Okay. Um, now, he had other, um, I, I think the, the issue that we have in, in this incident is that he had other options available to him being inside a, a secure facility um, she was restricted why would the fact that they're in a secure facility what, what role does that play in the decision of whether whether to use force or not um, so she can't go anywhere right she's in the locked bay it should be with the exception of other officers bringing in or you know or other correctional officers bringing people in so uh, generally speaking, people don't escape, and it, but it does happen, but a vast majority of the time it doesn't. Um, if we were to tar somebody or hobble somebody on the street, you were to immediately go to the back door of the jail for monitoring because, you know, we want to make sure they're, uh, they're being monitored. 
So they're already at the jail. So if that's what she's doing, they could have tarred her or, or placed the hobble on her. She's already at the back of the jail. It's, it's a decent climate. So the last thing that I want to do is have somebody proned out or, or tarred on, on a pavement on a hot day with the asphalt. I mean, even on a cold day, the, the asphalt can get hot because of the sun. Um, so that, that's what I'm speaking of, that she's back there. So, I mean, there would be nothing wrong if we were to, to tar her and then turn her on her side in the recovery position and wait for the, the correctional officers to take her inside um, because there would be no risk for, like, secondary injury from the concrete being too hot, things of that nature. Okay. Thank you. And um, would, was her kicking him something that we would not address? Absolutely, we would address it. However, um, in this situation, do you believe that his use of force was within our, our policy and training? With the strikes that were rendered after the kick, the repeated the strikes, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. And that's consistent with your testimony today? That's right. I don't have any further questions. Officer, I have a couple to try to clarify uh, a few blurred lines. Um, first of all, with respect to the strikes that Borisati administered at scores. Yes, sir. Are you able to were you able to determine from looking at the video and reading other materials and reading Borisati's deposition uh, what the purpose of those strikes was? I do. I was. Uh, what? Explain to us uh, what your 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 opinion is of the purpose of Borisati using the strikes at score. He was trying to get her uh, right hand behind her back and secure it. So he was using those as distraction techniques. We target large muscle masses to gain control of the limb, so we can put the uh, the limb in in handcuff. And considering that Vickery already had her left hand restrained. Um, he, Borisati was trying to get her right hand behind her back and he was using those as distractions um, to overcome that, her being under her head. Now we've looked at the scores video several times today. Yes. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you observe uh, after the head pushing sequence uh, uh, that uh, Borisati was able, that he pulled her right arm out from under her body and back around to the back? I did observe that. Uh, and was that, um, is in your uh, interpretation of events, um, a, um, uh, a partial success in in response to um, the use of strikes? I do. Yeah. Right. Uh, did you see him administer strikes uh, after he uh, pulled her arm uh, uh, from under her head after the push down episode? I did. And uh, do you have an opinion as to whether those strikes were appropriate? They were. And why were they appropriate? Because even as he pressed her head down, whether it, it contacted the concrete or her forearm or her arm, uh, he still needed to use force to get her arm from under her body to behind her back because she was not um, being passive at that time. She was still, it appeared she was still resisting. Um, so he was using those additional strikes to gain control of that, that limb. And as you've testified, once uh, she was secured, you observed no uh, force used against her at, at, uh, at scores, correct? That is correct, sir. You read Officer Borisati's deposition? Yes, sir. Uh, do you recall that in his testimony, uh, he explained that her arm was under her head on the pavement um, and that he was not attempting to push her head or face into the pavement? I did Check read that. Form. If you accept that is true, if you accept it is true that her arm was under her head and, the, and Borisati's statement that he was not attempting to smash her face into the pavement, uh, do you have an opinion as to the um, uh, movement of her head by Borisati uh, in, in, with respect to JSO uh, policy. If he's 
What's the question? I, I asked him to accept things as true. Do you have an opinion? What's wrong with the form? I'm just stating my objection. For no, the what is wrong with the form? So I can correct it. Please repeat your question. All right. Okay, uh, if you accept as true or Asadi's uh, testimony that Martinez's right arm. Characterize his testimony. I'll tell you what, I'll let Paul finish up on that point. Um, well, I don't have the deposition in front of me. Why don't you tell me, Kirby, what you think Borisati testified to with respect to her arm under her head? I don't know what he. Okay. I don't. I don't think he testified that he that her arm was was under her head and that he did not attempt to hit her head into the concrete as you're phrasing it in your question. Okay. I don't think he testified to that. If if you he accept his, actually. I'm sorry. I was saying he did actually testify. Yeah. If you okay. accept is true, that Borisati. Uh, if you accept is true, his his account that he was not attempting to smash. Martinez's face into the pavement. Do you have an opinion as to his use of the effort to move her head in attempting to get her under control? If his if his yes reasoning, or no. yes. And what is that opinion? That if yes, that if he was trying to control her head to get her arm back, and he was he knew and and he did testify in the deposition that he recognized that her form was under his head. If he was trying to use that as a distraction to get her arm back, that 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 would. That would not be unreasonable because we do teach if you can control the head, you can control the body. Five minutes left on media. You were asked about the strikes at scores. You were asked about the strikes at the Sally Port. Would you characterize? How would you characterize? Strike that. Do you, in your view of the video, and you're reading the counts? Did you perceive there to be a difference between the uh, purpose of the strikes used at scores versus the strikes, the, the, the uh, repetitive strikes at, uh, at the Sally Port? Did I, did I, did I, there appeared to, yes, I did. And what was that? Uh, the one in scores appeared to be to try to gain compliance and restrain somebody who is actively physically resisting. Um, and then the repeated strikes um, after he, she kicked him and was able to push her against the wall I, again, I, I don't. I didn't see the need for the additional strikes after the first. I don't have anything else. All right. I'm reading from page 69 of Borisati's deposition. Question by Mr. Phillips: Where did you strike her, and how many times? Answer: I don't recall the amount of times, but I know I struck her in the lower back, right side area. And I know that I pushed her head down on top of her arm in an attempt to get her arm loose that was under her. If you accept that as true, was there anything wrong with what uh, Borisati did with respect to Martinez's head at, at scores? No, sir. Nothing else. Paul? Do you have any independent evidence or any knowledge as to whether or not Martin, Ms. Martinez's head actually struck the concrete? I have nothing. I have no other questions. I got it. I have a few. Um, yeah, I've got about three minutes left on video. I'll go ahead and change that media out. Uh, maybe not. Earlier you were asked uh, if you knew whether Ms. Martinez was armed in the scores parking lot. Are, are you aware that while Officer Vickery and Borisati were struggling with her with on, while she was on the ground, she had a single handcuff attached to her left arm? I do. That, I, I did read that. Uh, can a single handcuff attached to a suspect be considered a weapon? 100%. Uh, so, in fact, was Ms. Martinez armed? With a handcuff, she would be. That's all I have. In the scores parking lot, did you see Ms. Martinez swinging around a cuff? in an attempt to use it as a weapon? Sorry, it was f from the angle that I have with what I've seen, I, I, I don't recall. Is that a no? We could view the video if you like. If, it, if you need to. It Did. probably would need to change media. You know what, it's fine. We played a trial if we need to. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have any further question. That's fine. Okay, we'll read if it's transcribed. Okay, that concludes this deposition. It is 4.03.